Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. Scotiabank, UBS, does it go much deeper than these couple of banks? Well, it's a great question, Dave, uh, and it does. When, we, when Ghana first started in 1999, uh, I, I started Ghana with my colleague Chris Powell. Uh, we thought it was just the bullion banks manipulating the price. We, we realized that was the case after long-term capital management blew up the big hedge fund and the Fed came in and bailed them out. And I could see that every time gold was going above 300, it got stopped. But anyway, we realized over the next year that it, it was much bigger than that and that it involved the U.S. government and the Fed, the Treasury, Bank for International Settlements, other central banks, and so on. And, and in a way, the banks were the agents for this major operation. You're saying the government is actually behind a lot of this. How, how about the, the central bank? Well, they... yeah, the, the, Fed, the Fed is behind it. The Fed and the Treasury and Exchange Stabilization Fund, yes. So they're all behind this. Now, the question I, I'm sure a lot of people have is, what is the purpose of suppressing the precious metals market? Why are they so concerned about gold and silver? Well, again, it's another question that's right on the money that uh, uh, it has to do with the interest rates and the dollar uh, to, to protect them. And at the same time, if you think about it, every time gold goes up or goes up sharply, it's something bad for the money and power, the establishment. It's always a negative. It's never good. Oh, gold's going up because all is so well. It's like gold has become the barometer of U.S. financial market health. So they have taken it upon themselves to, to keep it suppressed and under control at all times. And they've been doing it, you know, for a very long time now. And it just goes on and on and on. And of course, we'll get into what I think is coming. But in the meantime, oh, that's the way it is. They don't want individuals to see what's really happening in the economy. Is that is that what you're saying? That's They're correct. Again, think of a, a, a ther thermometer, barometer, in other words, if it rises sharply, there's something wrong. It's, 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 it's an unhealthy situation. So they want that to be diffused. And they got involved in doing this, and they just kept at it and at it. And, and now they've got themselves in a box in a way because it's, it's gone on for so long. And they're run, they're, the physical uh, gold and silver uh, situation is going to be a big problem for them. But in the meantime, the manipulation goes on. So when you talk about suppression, what actually do they do to suppress uh, gold and silver? How are they able to do it? Well, uh, it has to do with physical gold and the paper markets. Uh, initially, way back when, and how I got started was I, I was working with a fellow named Frank Veneroso who wrote something called the Gold Book. And he had learned from the Central Bank of England that the gold loans at the Times were, were about, uh, gold, uh, gold loans were about 8,000 tons. And the establishment had them as zero. In other words, the gold cartels, we would call their central banks, were taking gold from, from, uh, uh, from the physical gold from the central banks and leasing it out, putting physical supply into the marketplace. And that physical supply is what helps meet demand. And that's how they press the price. And then over the years, they've been using the paper market considerably, especially the, the futures market, to uh, affect how the price trades in other words they hit it and and the, and the physical market follows it's like the tail wagging the dog with all this suppression that they're doing do you see precious metals right now moving up well of course as you might suspect the answer would be yes i mean right now and they have been for years because of this price suppression scheme they're at artificially low levels and it's a simple but true way of looking at it i mean if gold had kept pace with inflation it would be at least double what it is today. And that's just if things were normal. 
And then uh, silver is a whole different situation. We don't quite, as far as people I know, don't quite understand where they've got the physical silver to do their thing, but it's like that's their uh, kryptonite. And uh, when silver, and we think it's going to explode, it's going to go berserk because of what they've done. They're just going to run out of enough physical supply to meet demand, and this gold cartel, as I've labeled it, is just going to be overpowered. And it's it's a tipping point that's coming. Well, a lot of people say that the ratio between gold and silver, they're completely off. I think it's 80 to 1 right now. And they're saying that this is completely far off them from what it, what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like something like 10 to 1 or something like that. Do you see silver and gold getting back to that ratio? Uh, well, it's actually not. It was 80 to 1. You're right. Yeah. It's come down to about 69. Oh, okay. Off its highs. And it's historically it's more like 30 and 40 and it's been as low as 15 and because of what they've done and when silver and i believe their trigger number will be 21 right now it's 19 takes that out you could see the silver price move up to 50 like it's done twice before in history but then it's going to go much beyond that i think up to 100 and probably much more because they just have, have run out and and they've used all this silver to aid in their their gold price suppression scheme because they're related and they got involved in doing it and now they've got themselves in a box as I mentioned earlier because they're going to run out of physical silver to keep keep going at what they are. But what's going to stop them from using the paper market? Can they continually just create more contracts and just throw it at the silver market to keep the price of silver down? Uh, yes and no. Uh, they can for a, a period of time but every day uh, uh, there is a physical market where, you know, people need silver and people need to sell it. And the, the price is fixed in London every day, and that's usually what the, da the daily price is in silver as it is in gold. And no matter what they do, at the, end of, at, the, at the end of the day, which is actually the beginning of our day, there's a physical price, and you've got to have enough supply to meet the demand. So they can affect the price, and, and by doing what they do in the paper market, you know, they can affect what, what the suppliers will want to do and get rid of silver to protect what the price that they already have and so on. But it, they're running on fumes now, at least we think they are, and it's we're getting down to the point where they just won't have that physical s silver again to meet that, that demand, and then it's going to force uh, something that's going to be spectacular. If silver, you're saying, if, if it starts to move up, like you're saying, it hits 21, and then it starts moving up, what happens with gold? Does that also start moving up? Yes, and that's when your ratio, as you were talking about, mm -hmm. will, will start to come way down. Silver will lead the way. And they're petrified of, of, of this occurring, which is why they've been stopping silver the past month or two uh, when it gets above 20, and they don't want it to get close to 21 because... They know that's their trigger point, and there's a lot going on, we think, in silver behind the scenes. But in the meantime, they're J.P. Morgan and the gang that's uh, heavily short continue to keep the pressure on. This manipulation that we're seeing with um, gold and silver, uh, this is continuing. And we mentioned this before uh, previously, uh, the economy is tied to gold and silver. So as silver and gold continually rises, what happens to the economy? I mean, what, what are people going to see? I mean, are, how they're going to explain that the dollar is devaluing, maybe? The economy is not doing well? Because, like you said, this is going to be a, um, a, a signal that something's wrong with the economy. So when gold and silver, like you're saying, it starts to move up, what is the rest of the economy going to look like? Well, from my simplistic standpoint, in a way... It shouldn't have to mean anything, but what, what has happened, they're going to make it into something, uh, make a big deal out of it. Instead of it, let's, let it be a, the free market process work. Uh, eventually, when gold and silver explode like we think they're going to do, it's because they will have lost control and not be able to keep it where it is with all the different ways that they've come up with uh, to keep the markets where they are. But... Uh, because they thwarted the free market process, when it goes, it's likely to be part of the reason it's going to be we're going to be be in such chaos. I mean, people know all about the low interest rates and zero interest rates and quantitative easing and printing money, and they're really hitting the wall. Uh, you know, to a, a, there's not much more that they can do, and, and, and they've reached a again another a tipping point 
what do they do now? Uh, my old uh, colleague, Ray Dalio, Bridgewater Associates, who has the largest hedge fund in the world, was on CNBC today. And he's talking about we're in a dangerous situation. And they, they, and they, they, there aren't, isn't too many more measures they can take except to go back to the well and do, do more of the same with pretty more money and so on, trying to prop up asset prices and keep the economy growing. But we're in a real difficult situation, and part of it's been created because they didn't let the free market process work, market corrections, uh, uh, let us go into a recession when we needed to be to clear things out and have interest rates at, at a, you know more reasonable levels historically. And what are they going to do now? Even the thought of raising an, uh, the interest rate is pathetic. A quarter of a point has the market you know dropping three or four hundred points. Well, this is silly because. What they would raise rates to today would be would have been unthinkable four or five years ago. That's how bad the situation really is, and that's why they want to keep gold under control because they won't don't want people to realize that we're in a really tough situation now. And it's very interesting because uh, Russia, China, they've been purchasing a lot of physical gold. Has the United States, from uh, your research or what you've been looking at, have they been purchasing gold and silver, or do we even have gold and silver? Well, that's a that's a big issue. We're supposed to have eight thousand one hundred and thirty six tons, and but there hasn't in in our vaults. But there's never been an official Fed audit. Uh, I think the last audit was in the Eisenhower administration. No one really knows what gold is there, and if it's there, is it someone else's gold that we've exchanged gold with? Uh, there's no accounting for it, and we don't believe that. Um, that 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 the United States gold is anywhere near eight thousand tons, and. Regarding you know, Russia and China, uh, yes, they have been accumulating, and we know that they know what what got to know is regarding what has been going on in the in the gold market. In the sense that the central banks in the West don't have the gold they say they have anymore, and they know what's coming. Uh, God has had four international conferences, and uh, one of Putin's top economic advisors, Andrei Baikov, was at two of them, and and. Uh, we know that that he got the word back to the to the Russian the government about what's really going on. The Chinese have followed Gata. We know that from different uh, things that have been released. I've had um, uh, conference calls with their uh, uh, their wealth funds, and uh, they know what Gata knows, and they keep buying. Now, what's very interesting is that we see Russia and China, like you said, and we've been talking about they're buying physical. But we're also seeing um, Switzerland and Norway, the central banks there, they're printing money. And they're not buying precious metals. They're buying um, and they're accumulating precious metals mining shares. Why do you think, first, why don't you think they're in the market buying precious metals, the physical? Why do you think they're in there purchasing the mining shares instead? Well, you know, this is new news and it's uh, it's amusing in a way, Dave, because... If you think of, again, the central banks as a club, uh, and especially the, the Western central banks, they don't may not want to be seen buying physical gold, taking on their colleagues, which are secretly which are secretly suppressing the price. I mean, they all know what's going on. So the way to get around that would be to buy the gold that's in the ground to the uh, the, the miners themselves. So it's uh, it's kind of a uh, it brings smiles to someone like myself to think what they're doing is circumvent uh, their own uh, their own crowd, and that's one of the reasons that this, the mining share just went bonkers this year. I mean, the HUI, which is an index, went from 99 to 280, and uh, it's under a little correction now. But most of the corrections in the miners this year have been minor to non-existent because of what you just mentioned. Even central banks are coming and buying them. When we look at this entire situation with gold and silver and the economy, what should the everyday person, I mean, should they go into the paper market? Should they buy and hold physical gold and silver? What do you think they should do at this point? Well, if I'm correct, uh, you know, some big moves are just barely begun. Gold went to 1900 and corrected back to below 1100. Now it's above 1300 and silver has been to $50, uh, five, six years ago, and now it's back only at 19. As I mentioned earlier, I think it's going to 100 and more. So again, I'm 
very prejudiced, but yes, owning gold and silver and taking possession of it is something that uh, everyone should, should look at. And I think the mining shares have a long way to go because of, of what's coming in the precious metals prices. So it's something that should be looked at carefully by uh, people who want to be diversified, if nothing else. Now, what about those people who are out there? They're saying that gold is going to be dropping below a thousand. They're saying there's no way that gold is going to be moving up. They're saying it's going to be dropping back below a thousand. What do you say to those people? Is that even possible right now? Well, you know, for someone who's looking for the numbers we just talked about, it's hard for me to conceive of something like that. You know, you never know if there was some sort of economic debacle and there was a liquidity crisis and people were just panicking to get cash any way they could, everywhere they could. It's conceivable it could happen briefly, but I just can't imagine it. Of course, if anything ever did happen like that, it would make the the eventual prices even that much higher. So I think when we get anywhere close to that, uh, or things are going wrong, you know, it's the government's going to go back to what the only thing they can do left, and the and the Fed and so on is is to is to print more money, and to keep things from uh, you know going into a depression or staying there. So. I just think it's a win-win situation, and uh, it's hard for me to conceive of, of, of gold and silver going down much from here. When we're looking at all of this, and we see the economy completely falling apart, you're looking at gold and silver, you're saying that it's going to start to rise, their days are numbered where they can't suppress it anymore, and when you're looking at it, you're saying if we hit 21 for silver, that is the signal. Is there a signal for gold? Is there a price signal where people should say, okay, we hit 1400 or we hit 1500 gold is also going to take off? You know, I, it's, I, it's funny. I hadn't really thought too much about it. It's much more, it's, it seems to be a much more uh, opaque situation than silver is. And I'm just using it only because of my own analysis. When silver was at 1850, we thought that would be the initial trigger. And it was, we got up to 21. And J.P. Morgan and the rest of them have come back and stopped it. But silver is more technically because of uh, uh, sitting here and staring at you. Gold, you know, you could come up with any number. I just think that when the, when silver takes off, it will be the uh, a trigger for gold. And, and it's, it's hard to know exactly what that number is. 1,400 is as good as any. So let me ask you, I mean, a lot of people are worried about this um, because we saw it back in the Great Depression where the government came in and they said, listen, we need your gold. Um, we'll give you, you know, whatever, I think it was $20 an ounce for gold. And then they upped it to 35 ounce, ounces a, a little bit later. Should people be worried if they're owning gold that the government might come in and do this once again in the future? Well, yes, it is a... a, a of interest, it's just hard for me to imagine something like that to make gold such a big deal because so few Americans own it. I mean, <laughs> who, who are they confiscating it from? And and then to make a big deal out of it would all it puts a focus on gold. So it's hard for me to the rest of the world would have to laugh, would laugh at us. Well, you know what's wrong with America? Who cares about gold? I mean, think about it. I mean, they're the ones that make it a big deal and. Uh, uh, things can change down the road when if, if the, some people are talking about gold being reset at a much higher price and so on, but uh, I just can't imagine them, low, you know, stooping to confiscating people's gold when I, when so few Americans own it. Hmm. And what are they going to do about silver? How are they going to even bring that into the equation? Well, that, that was my next question. Is Do, do you think silver is something that everyone should have because uh the government's really not looking at silver at all really um they they always talk about gold they never really talk that much about silver that's correct and it's it's interesting you bring that up because again i'm smiling because you know how would they, we know what they're doing but then how would they ever explain that to the public about that they can't own silver and they go what what are you talking about so yeah that's it's even that fear could be another thing that could send silver even more bonkers, and uh, uh, it's, it's very interesting, actually. So going forward, going into this fall, going into uh, 2017, when do you think that gold, or especially silver, is going to all of a sudden break out? Do you have a time frame for this? 
Well, any of us who've had a time frame are always wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's just the way it is, and and you know we're we're talking about taking on the richest, most powerful people in the world, and they're going to extend what they're doing as long as they can, and, and especially now in the United States with our election coming up, uh, the last thing they, and especially with the establishment, you know, wanting Hillary Clinton because that's that's their that's their person, Republican or Democrat, uh, they're going to do everything they can to keep gold and silver under control. So it would, it's, and that's exactly what we're seeing on front, like right now. So I would think it would be sometime, you know, after the election, and uh, it's liable to happen out of nowhere. In other words, it'll just be an event, something will trigger it, and uh, then off we go. And uh, that'd be my best guess. Your best guess. So when you say, like, when you say it after the election, um, actually, many people are saying things are, might happen right before or right after the election where the economy might just completely fall apart. But you said there might be some type of an event. What do you mean by an event well, that might trigger it? Well, if we, if we, if we go back uh, over the last number of years, uh, I'll give you a good example of what happened, which, sent, which, which I'd love to get into, not get into, but mention is Brexit. In other words, everyone thought, uh, you know, the English was going to stay in the England was going to stay in the European Union, and then it, it was a total su surprise to the markets anyway. What happened? And gold and silver, because the bad guys, the gold cartel, were caught off guard. Gold went up nearly a hundred bucks, and silver was flying. And it's because they weren't prepared for what was going to happen, and that was totally unexpected. So it's going to be some kind of event that people aren't aware of that sends shockwaves into the financial market system and gets people scared and people are going to want to own gold and silver for protection. And so it'll be something like, like that or a Lehman Brothers, something that's going to come out of the woodwork, which nobody is, is, expects. And it could be involved in derivatives, uh, which is, you know, the use of, you know, paper instruments, which has gone absolutely bonkers in the bullion banks, the gold cartel and so on to, uh, do what they want to do financially. And you could have like a nuclear explosion where say a Deutsche Bank, you know, blows up and that leads to, you know, their counterparty risk issues with other banks and it just feeds on itself. And then all of a sudden the world wants to own gold, which isn't there. Yeah. If, if we see the derivative market completely collapse, personally, I think it's going to be a chain reaction where it's going to hit bank after bank after bank. At that point, I think the system is just going to come down just like we saw back in 2008 with these subprime securities when everyone was defaulting on their mortgages and these AAA uh, securities completely imploded on themselves. And then all of a sudden we saw, you know, AIG, we saw uh, Lehman, uh, Bear Stearns all start to completely fall apart. And then the banks needed a bailout. And I think this derivative problem is almost the same exact thing, but much, much worse. And I think you're right. If this does collapse, it's going to send the precious metals market very, very high. And I think people are going to see this. Can the central banks, the other banks that are in collusion with all of this, can they keep this going much longer? And the answer is no, because of the of getting back to the, the, the their big problem is the physical market, that they've gone through a lot of the central bank supply to meet demand. Uh, how they've got, as I mentioned earlier, how they've done it with silver the past couple of years, the smartest guys I know, supply demand guys, Eric Sprott and David Morgan, they can't figure it out. They're just going to hit the wall. And that's when the game's over. It's checkmate. And so, and the, the, the clock is ticking on this one. And uh, I don't think we have too much longer to wait. And it's going to be spectacular, especially silver, because we think that that's where they're, again, the kryptonite situation when the supply and the people are not going to go what to do, you'll see incredible price action. So they are going to hit the wall, and it's going to be sooner rather than later. Bill, thank you very much for being on the X-22 Report Spotlight. Uh, once again, how can people see your work? Well, again, Dave, uh, great questions. I really mean that. And as far as myself, uh, I write a financial website, Gold and Silver, lametropolecafe.com, and people can sign up for a two-week uh, free trial. And my colleague, Chris Powell at gata.org puts out stuff all the time and he does a great job. And 
people can get on that list for, for free. Uh, and uh, we've been a tag team going after the what he called the bad guys for since 1999, and, and we're going to keep at it till we win the day. Bill, once again, really, I appreciate you coming on.